Okay gang, I've got my notes open and I'm going to try to do this in one take. So I have been listening to the podcast 99% Invisible for years and the longtime producer Avery Truffleman recently left the show and is now producing The Cut podcast. The Cut is a weekly audio magazine that explores culture, sex, politics, style, and more. And the September 2nd episode of The Cut was an episode called The Joy of Sex, and it was all about the art of sexting. It's a great episode, but the thing I wanted to bring up about that episode is that generally, <laughs> they, bring, they make this point that generally folks don't want to receive unsolicited pics, which, you know, makes sense, uh, consent, opting in, all that good stuff. But it also brings up the point that even though we may want to be asked the question, what kind of photo do you want? We might not know how to answer that question. Because, I mean, who asks questions like that? Well, I can remember an occasion when I was caught off guard by a really simple question like that. I was going through a rough time, and a friend asked me, quite simply, what can I do to support you? And I had no idea how to respond. And I actually think that this is a common problem. Um, how can I help can be a really hard question to answer. Um, I saw a Tumblr post from someone the other day and they work in hospice and their strategy for moments like this was not to ask how can I help but rather what is one thing I can do to make your room more comfortable before I leave for the day. And I thought that this was a really clever way of making the question more specific and therefore easier to answer. Um, I have the same issue with the question, what do you want? And I think most of us have experienced this um, if you're trying to pick a show to watch on Netflix or trying to choose a restaurant to go to with a friend. Um, my friend Katie and I, we do this virtual movie night every week and we have developed a strategy for picking our movie. And it goes like this. Usually one of us will ask, you know, are you in the mood for X genre tonight? With us, it's typically rom-coms, but sometimes we're in the mood for something different. And once we've agreed on a genre, then Katie will usually generate a list of films. Like, she'll see what's on the streaming platforms that we have. Hey, Buster. What's up? And she will, <laughs> she will generate a list of suggestions anywhere between, like, four and ten films um, in the, you know, genre that we picked. And she'll send me the list, and then from those however many four to, ten, four to ten films, I will pick my top two or three and then I'll say I would be fine with any of these and then she'll pick the final movie. And that strategy works pretty well for us. Um, one of the reasons that it works is that the questions are more specific than just what movie do you want to watch, but also that we present each other with a menu of options. She presents me with some options, I narrow it down, and then she picks from that list. Um, a want, will, won't list is also a good way of approaching questions like this. So a want, will, won't list basically looks like, you know, uh, one column of things that you want to do, a column of things that you will do that you don't feel, you know, particularly strongly about, and then a column of things that you will not do. And um, people use this in the context of sex, trying to decide what they want to do and will do with their partner, but you can apply a want, will, won't list to many areas of your life. I was thinking specifically about birthdays, because a lot of years, you know, my family will ask, what do you want to do for your birthday? And it's at that point that I forget that I have ever wanted anything. <laughs> but a want, will, won't list could be really useful in this context, you know, maybe, maybe not, you know, won't, will, won't, but maybe what do you want to do, what do you not want to do, what do you feel neutral about? And you don't even have to come at it wants first. You might say, well, I don't want a surprise party. I don't want to have to drive on my birthday. Um, I don't want gifts from people. Then you might say, um, I feel neutral about like going out versus staying in. We could do either, I'd be fine with either. And then you might finally say, what do I want? Well, I want to spend the day with my friends. Uh, I want to get dressed up. I want to have a good meal. And just like that, you have a birthday roadmap. Buster, 
I know you want attention. He wants attention. But actually, Buster is making a good point. Buster is being very vocal about wanting my attention. And I gotta tell you that I think one of the reasons that my relationships work, why my long-term friendships work, is that we have figured out a way to communicate to each other our wants and needs. And this is an ongoing process, and I know that it can be hard sometimes to ask for the things that we want. I mean, sometimes we're just trying, we go along with whatever because we're trying to make sure that the other person or other people are happy. And sometimes asking what we want can, asking for what we want can feel really vulnerable. Um, but how are we going to get what we want if we don't ask for it? Buster, Buster clearly wants some attention and probably some food. And so, I will leave it there for tonight. And my friends and fellow Vedsies, I will see all of you tomorrow. Come here. All right.